going on you two peoples? I'm standing in a pump box with a pump in a box and today I'm going to get this thing unboxed and get it hooked up and see if we can't blow some water. Instructions. Oh, it's got plugs. Sweet. So the plan is going to be to put some boards from this corner of the box to that corner of the box and bolt this guy right here down to said boards and then we'll start working on hooking up the well to the nose of this bad boy. This motor is pre-wired for 230 volts. That's good, because that's what I want to do anyway. Right now I'm just trying to, before I bolt anything down or screw anything, I'm trying to figure out how everything's going to set in here so it'll flow as nicely as possible. And I'm glad I made this box this big because let's face it, I'm not going to get any skin here. tell you that trying to film something down in this echoey hole is difficult but let's look at what we got going on pump is mounted on this board now I got to get this hooked up to here now there's two separate trains of thought in hooking this thing up I'm not a plumber I'm a mechanic, I only play a plumber on TV occasionally, if you call this TV, and uh, I've heard it both ways from plumbers, so I'll explain both of them. You do what you think is best for this. Okay guys, check this out. Version 1, this is the pump, and you would run a, an inch and a quarter drop pipe all the way down to the bottom and there's this thing the check valve will go on the bottom which is also called a foot valve that's version one version two is to put the check valve just below or just excuse me just above the soil surface and to suck it straight off the sides of the pipe this is the one i'm using because it's simpler to me, I don't know the difference if there's any clear advantage for either of these. So I got this board loose so I can slide it around a little bit. I didn't screw it to the sides right here yet. And that's so I can hook up this thing. And like I said in that doodle, I'm going to do it straight off the side of the pipe. You want to make sure you wrap this Teflon tape in the right direction like where it screws in because if you don't then it'll unscrew the teflon and don't ask me how i know that and i just did it again round two there we go this is my check valve you see it's got an arrow on it right there you can see that. Make sure that it's going up away from the well and towards the pump. Now I'm going to chop this thing off down low so I have enough room to make this bend to come into the pump.
All right, I had some technical difficulties with my camera, but now this is what we're dealing with. I haven't glued this yet, and I haven't glued this or this, this one. The reason why you want to do that is because if you glue it, it's there. You're not gonna, you don't get a second chance. So I always dry fit every dry fit. In other words, don't put a glue on it and make sure everything's right length, and then I go back disassemble it and put the glue on it. And we're getting real close to having water. Here it is. I got it set up like this for just to test it and to pump the well off because it's a new well. And if there's any garbage in there, I want it to get out before I put my special valve that I got over there in there. I don't want to get pieces of sand or whatever trash might be in that valve or in that uh, well in that valve. But check it out. This thing took a little while to get primed up. I had one of my neighbors come over and uh, help me get it primed up because it had a big air pocket. We had to take loose that plug that's right there on the, the snout of the pump. I guess you call it a snout. It looks like a snout to me. That guy right there. I got the well pumped off. It runs, it's primed. This pump did come with extra plugs, which makes it nice because when you take the little line off the side of the housing right here, see, it came with a plug. I didn't have to buy that extra. It came in the box. Look right here. I've already taken the uh, factory switch off because the valve I'm going to be using is called a cycle stop valve and it relocates the switch to a different location that's up by the valve. I'll explain more about that later. For the time being, I got to rip the back of this pump off and wire it differently. Not changing the voltage, just making it aware I can have a remote uh, pressure switch. I got me a little board installed. Now that's going to have two purposes. Number one, to mount the tank. Let's go right here. And number two, because uh, the sides here kind of had a little bulge, as you can see. It's kind of got a little beer belly like me. Maybe you can see it. Either way, even if you can't see it, it's there. I promise you. I don't like that. I already come back since I did the original pump house build and put the these on all four corners to try to minimize that. Or is that a word? I don't know. Either way, I was trying to keep it from caving in. Now I'm going to take and mount the tank in the valve right there that guy to that board that one i'll be right back i'm working and some beers <clears throat> what's up everybody it's a new day I'm sitting here chilling in my hole with my new homie the red line pump I've been busy I've been dealing with SD problem SD card problems and camera issues I lost some footage from yesterday but I was busy check it out how you doing Got the tank installed and my valve. I got my wires hooked up in my box with my new breaker. They're coming out right here through the little hole in the wall. Now I gotta put a box down there on the end and wire everything up to this switch. Then I gotta adjust my valve, get my pressure right. And then I'll do some gallons per minute testing to see what this bad boy will put out. Stay tuned. Alright. 
when you relocate your pressure switch to a different spot besides where it comes from the factory, you're going to need a box like this. This is an outdoor metal box, and you see it's got a ground in it. And that ground's going to travel through this. And if you're using this particular pump, that half inch fitting that it comes with, this guy, it'll screw right in to the side of this pump. Just like that. And it's beautiful. Now I'm gonna wire this up with these nuts right here. Suitable for wet locations. That's what she said. Got my switch wired up. I got all my conduit run. Got my box installed. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. I don't, but it looks like it. All right, everybody, everything's plumbed up. Check it out. Got me a test pipe going out there. Now I wanna take a minute to talk about this valve. The purpose of this cycle stop valve here is if, let's just say that uh, if you have an irrigation system set up, you're setting up yourself and uh, all the zones are the same. Well, in that case, you could just, or when I say the same, I mean that, hey, you hush. I know you don't like talking about irrigation, but I ain't got time for you right this minute. Go, go play, go play, good girl. Like I was saying, if all the zones uh, consume the same gallons per minute, then you'd be straight. You could just use a uh, pump start relay on your timer. But I don't know, I've got all these crevices and I'm trying to water a garden and I might even use, matter of fact, it ain't a mite, I'm going to run a line over to a spigot where I could use a hose and spray in my yard off of this pump. So that means you're going to have varying gallons a minute. This guy right here will keep a constant PSI no matter what the demand is as far as gallons per minute go. But you have to tune it. And I'm going to set this thing to 40 pounds so that that's all it'll run because this is a 30-50 switch. If you had a 40-60 switch, you would set it to 50 pounds. All right, y'all, it's the moment of truth. I'm going to cut this to about, I ain't going to cut it off. I need to get the air out of that tank. Let's put it about there. This is my special tool, my cut the breaker on tool. Ah! Uh oh. I got a problem. You know, it'd probably help if I went and turned the breaker on in the main panel. Once again, the moment we were all waiting for. Or maybe not you, but me. Woo! It's happening, stuff is happening. Pressure's building. There's water coming out. It's running back this way, I don't like that. Okay, it built up to 50 and then cut off. See? I'm going to have to tune this valve a little bit because it won't putting out enough. Alright guys, let's see what happens when I turn this thing on. I got a 5 gallon bucket down there at the end of the hose. The hose. The pipe. And I'm going to give it the beans and see how much it will put out. Alright, everybody ready? I got my stopwatch set up here. Hang on, I'm gonna let this sit down. I'm gonna set this down here. We'll hit them at the same time. Now, 
fill them back up. When it gets that tank full and it gets to 50 feet of size, it should shut down. Oh. Well then, it looks like everything's working. 19 and a half seconds to fill up five gallons. I tried it a minute ago off camera and I got like 1801. I think I was a little slow on the uh, pushing the button for my stopwatch this time because I was trying to hold the camera at the same time. Either way, that's going to put me right at 18 gallons a minute. If you take, uh, say like 18 seconds is a third of a minute. And then you take in, uh, yeah, there'll be 15 gallons. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I need to do some math. Either way, it's putting out pretty good. I designed, designed my irrigation system to deal with 10 gallons a minute. So it looks like I have the output enough to deal with what I'm about to throw at it. Okay, after I figured everything and did my math, it's somewhere in the range of 15 to 18 either way it's good i'm happy it should push anything i throw at it all right everybody i'm gonna include this video with a six i'm gonna I'm mark this a success and the next time you see me in this hole i'm gonna be hooking up the uh sprinkler timer and all the valves and everything else uh and i think it earned a name i always thought that if I could put out enough water, I was gonna call this thing the Monsoon 8000. So now, this is the Monsoon 8000. It can bring the rain. For whatever kind of grass I decide to put out here, it can bring the rain when Mother Nature doesn't provide. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me. I got a lot of new videos coming up. I got plenty of work to do always. Go ahead and leave a comment too, if you've got any other kind of tips or tricks or questions about what I did right here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back for the next one.